in our Christian faith. And I wanted to give you just a little nugget of truth here, and we're going to be doing a whole series, hopefully, on this very topic. Now, you've heard me say that when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, when you accept the implantation of the Holy Spirit, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, that after believing that you were sealed with a deposit, guaranteeing, guaranteeing your inheritance. We also read in John chapter 14, I believe it is, Jesus says, I will send you the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and he shall never leave you. So once you're a born-again Christian, then now you have two natures. You see, everybody walking around, uh, around you that does not have Jesus Christ is unfortunately spiritually dead. Now, Jesus uses that, uh, that term dead not so much to, to mean your physical body, but he used it uh, figuratively in the New Testament, um, and so does the Apostle Paul under inspiration of the Holy Spirit to show that if you do not have Christ, you're spiritually dead. We have Jesus, a young man coming to Jesus, wanting to follow Jesus. He says, my father's getting ready to die. Let me go home first with the rest of my family and bury my father. And Jesus says, no, let the dead bury the dead, but you, you follow me. In other words, there are some people that just refuse to accept Jesus Christ, so they re remain spiritually dead. That is indeed sad, brothers and sisters. And that's why we have the message of hope. We have to explain these things to people. They know they're a sinner. They know, you know, psychology calls it, they have psychological issues. The Word of God calls it what it is. It's sin. Everybody knows there's something wrong. So, as a Christian now, you have two natures. You have your old nature, and Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, I'd like you to read Romans 7 if you have a chance today. Apostle Paul says that once he, now that he's a Christian, he says, when, when I want to do those things that are right, I find that there's another law in me that's fighting against that new law, that, that new nature. And he says, sometimes I give in, oh wretched man that I am. But then he says at the end of that chapter, Romans chapter 7, he says, thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank God. And he also says in other epistles that the mystery of the gospel is Christ in us. How can Christ live in me when I still struggle with my carnal nature? The fact of the matter is he loves you so much. He says, I shall never leave you nor forsake you. He's inside of you if you're a Christian. He's talking to you. You're feeding off his word. And so here's what we need to do. As Christians, we need to feed our new nature. And all of that food that was bait... Uh, for our old nature, we need to remove that from our lives. Things that fed the carnal nature, things that fed our, our, our need and want to participate in the carnal activities of this world, we need to remove those things from our life and put in their place things of hope and faith, things that nourish our soul, the Word of God. Sometimes we have to change the TV programs we're watching. It's best, to, I believe, if we watch as little TV as possible. And none if all if possible. And, and so we may have to change what we view, we change what we listen to, and sometimes one of the hardest things is changing friends. It's not that we have to shun them or anything like that, but we have to not be unevenly yoked. Jesus says, do not be unevenly yoked. In other words, let your new nature dominate, your born-again Christ nature, the mind of Christ in you. Let that take over your old nature. Let that dominate you, and so you have to feed the new nature. You know, people today talk in the, in the health craze world, they talk about, you are what you eat. Well, spiritually speaking, that's true too. If you want to remain strong in Christ and become a mature Christian, then you have to feed that new nature. And you do that by studying uh, the Bible, by, go, by find, getting a pastor in a, in a healthy Bible-believing church, uh, surrounding yourself often with uh, fellow believers in Christ, and sharing and praying with each other. Yes, we're, we're in the world, but we're not part of the world. We have to live in this world. We have to be a light to this world. So we can't completely uh, shun and, and, and get rid of all evil around us. We just have to walk tight through it and be that light, that bright light, the light of Christ in you. So my, my hope is that you, would, that you would feed that new nature now that you're a Christian. Begin to feed it. Begin to, to put things around you, people, and, and what you see and what you hear and everything. Put the things around you that point you to Christ. Jesus says in John chapter 15, he said, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He that lops off every branch that doesn't produce. And he prunes those branches that bear fruit for even larger crops. He has already tended you by pruning you back for greater strength and usefulness by means of the commands I gave you. Take care to live in me and let me live in you. For a branch can't produce fruit when severed from the vine, nor can you 
the fruitful be fruitful apart from me. Jesus says, remain in the vine. You know, when, when a plant is in the soil and it's getting its food and its water, the, the plant is in the soil and the soil is in the plant. When a, when a baby is in the womb of its mother, the baby is in the womb and, and the mother is in the baby. It's, it's, it's feeding it, it's nourishing it. And so, so when Christ says, I and you and you and me, we, we, we come together now when we're born again. We have that new nature that merges with us with your psyche, your soul. And, and it merges there. So your mind, body, spirit, and soul now become inundated with a new nature. And now you need to feed that new nature and starve that old nature and let Christ become big in you and become the light of the world in the hopes that as we approach, brothers and sisters, the time of the rapture of the church and as we approach the great tribulation, the world will become darker and darker and darker. But you as a Christian will become lighter and lighter and lighter. My prayer is that you took in what I told you and remain in God's word and I'll talk to you soon. Love you.